Hello guys, welcome to the next part of the series. So in this uh, part, I'm going to talk about how to how you convert your schematic into a PCB for you to design. Um, let me turn up the project again. Perfect, everything saved. Um, so you will start by, just like when you're adding the schematic, go to your home tab and go to projects, or your project. And now instead of creating a schematic, you're going to add a PCB. And let's call this the same thing, LM2596. And this will be saved as a uh, PCB. So here, now in my source documents again, I can see this. And now, you, nothing's here yet, because I haven't imported anything. I need to actually import, uh, I need to tell this software, OK, what do I want to import? Which schematic do I want to import? Now we only have one schematic, but you could have multiple schematics. So you might have multiple um, things that you're importing. So in this case, we're going to go project. While we're uh, while we're in the uh, the uh, PCB tab, we're going to go projects. Import changes from Buck Project PCB. Okay. And now it's going to say, okay, I have all these parts and all these connections. Um, I want to validate the changes just like before, looks good, and execute the changes. And look at that, all the parts have popped up. So the first thing I want to do is let's move these parts. You can just click and drag and move these parts onto your PCB. Uh, and that'll give you probably a better idea of how... Uh, how big we can make this. So let's kind of scoot these over into the corner. So I, I bet I can make the PCB maybe about this big. Um, and let's start by reducing the size. So uh, let's go board shape, edit board shape. And we'll just drag, be sure not to not to get this anchor in the middle here. So that'll drag it down like this and that really sucks. No one wants a PCB like that. Control Z will fix it. Um, so grab it like in between the anchor points and we'll, we'll go down to here and we will go over to here perfect and then click outside the box and now you can see the pcb is a little bit smaller um, while you're in this mode by the way uh, control and scroll will zoom in you will definitely be using that um, your right click will pan so you can move around and then your left click will select and you can select drag and stuff like that so those will be some useful commands when you're moving a bunch of stuff around. All right, so it looks good. Now, let's say I wanted to change uh, something on my design. Let's say I wanted to add a part. Um, I'm going to add a like a Molex or something. So I can probe the output uh, one by two. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Maybe let's call that a header instead of a Molex. All right, perfect. So you've probably seen these before. Uh, they're little header pins. You you know you can plug your uh, your jumper wires and stuff into them. And in this particular case, it's just two of them. So I'm actually going to place one of these at the output here. So that I can plug my jumper wires into this and get the uh, get the power from it that I, I'm expecting and you know much more easily I can plug it into my Arduino or whatnot. So we will add that. So now if I if I plug my Arduino into here I'll get my five volts at the first pin and my ground at the second pin. It'll be a lot easier to actually utilize it. And you know what let's even do place this same thing at the input spacebar rotates um, so that we have you know we have our place we can put our power into as well. So let's do that. Add the ground. All right. Save the documents. Control S will do that. Um, we have to remember it's important to have designator names for this. So again, go to Tools, Annotate, Update the List. Reset all. Update the list. Accept changes, execute changes. So now this has a name, star one and star two. That's fine, you can call it whatever you want. In fact, I might even change it to J, because that's kind of a more common uh, connection.
character uh, name. But it really doesn't matter. Let's save it. Let's compile it to make sure there's no problems. Looks good. Uh, and now let's go back here and actually import those changes again. So go home, project, import changes. Same thing, validate. Now some things are going to change, obviously, because you have different connections. That's fine. And execute. And now we're going to have these two extra parts in here, our input and our output uh, port. The spacebar will rotate these parts again, just like before. And so now I kind of have all of the bare bones of everything that I want to do. And now I want to start routing. Um, I want to start routing uh, the different different parts here. So the first thing before we start routing, I want you to understand that a PCB has layers. And this particular PCB is a double layer. It has a top and a bottom. Uh, you can see on the bottom here, these are the different layers you can select. Um, the top layer is orange in Circuit Maker, and the bottom layer is blue, um, so that when you're looking at the design, it's it's easy to see kind of you know which layer you're on. Um, we'll be trying to do all of our routing just on the top layer for this video, but understand if you have a a, a, a schematic or a, a a PCB that you're designing that's multiple layers, you can switch between which layer you're routing just by switching top and bottom here. And so if I start routing while I'm on the bottom layer, it will route bottom layer, it will route traces on the bottom layer. Okay. All right, so before we route, I want to do one more thing. I want to make sure that the trace width for my power pin is, uh, is big enough. You know, when you have a lot of power going through a wire, you need to make sure that the wire is thick enough, otherwise you can burn the wire. And in fact, you can Google something like uh, a trace width calculator, for example. I've used this one before. Um, so I know in my case, we're going to have a 1.6 mil thick trace. So the copper that is 1.6 millimeters thick. And because, for example, um, this buck converter is capable of 3 amps, Let's say that in any particular case, we could have up to three amps uh, going through some of the power pins. So let's see what this thing suggests. Uh, assuming ambient temperature and trace length, uh, it suggests that we have a width of about 45 mil, let's just say. Now the only traces that will probably have, uh, have current potentially that high is the V-out trace. The VN trace probably won't be that high, but it could be. So let's go to our design rules and go to routing. Uh, actually, electrical, excuse me. Width, that's what I wanted. So routing and width. And we are going to create a new rule. So if I right click, I'm going to get a new rule. It's called width one. But let's call this one VN because it's going to be for the the input uh, VN net, and it's going to be for a particular net, not all nets, just a particular one. And the particular net is for the input net. I want to make sure that the input net is 45 mils min. Uh, so let's make all these 45. Maybe we can say we'll set the max to be. Uh, to give these units to 45 mil 45 mil and we can make this one 100 mil perfect we'll apply so that's and then we'll do another new rule and we'll make that one v out we'll call that v out it's for the net v out and for this one we'll do the same thing um, let's make it 45 mil Minimum, typically 45 mil, that's fine. And our maximum will be 100 mil. Apply, okay. So now anytime I route uh, V out or V in, it's going to be 45 mils by default because I've told, I've told Circuit Maker that's, that's the rule. That's what it's got to be. And then any other trace that isn't any of those will be just 10 mil, and that's totally fine. Apply, okay. Um... So now let's start routing. So you can go 
click up here, go to route. Now here is why it's super important to have net names. Now if I didn't have a net name on this, it wouldn't be called vouterVN. It's only called vouterVN or whatever because that's what we ended up calling it in our schematic here. So we called this particular one VN. We called this one out. You can see all those names come back right here. So it, it, it makes sense as to, you know, pin one was VN, pin two was out. We can kind of self-check ourselves if we have appropriate net names. All right, so now let's kind of, before we route, let's rearrange these into some way that makes a lot of sense. So our output is here and our input is here. Maybe, since we want uh, our board to go this way, you know, our, our, our power is going to go in here and out here, we'll move it like this. So our input capacitor that's connected to VN will go on this side. Our output capacitor that's connected to VOUT will go on this side. We'll attach our inductor here. Maybe we'll rotate this. So we have our VOUT here connected to our OUT pin here. And we'll rotate this one as well just to kind of keep it symmetric. Um, and this guy, pin 2, right here. All right. This is our input. So we'll put our input next to our input capacitor. That looks good. We can move them closer. We'll put our output terminal next to our output capacitor. That's good. Let's uh, let's rotate this so it looks like it's kind of in line with it. And we'll put our uh, our diode up here. We'll maybe find a better spot for that in a bit. All right. Now let's begin routing. So let's zoom in a bit. Don't worry about routing anything that's connected to ground. There's kind of a trick for that. I'll show you it at the end. So we'll begin by hitting route. And now anytime we hit a net, it will kind of show us, hey, this is this is how we're going to be routing it, right? It will kind of automatically highlight the VN pin. So you see there's a VN pin, there's a VN pin. So we'll click from here to here and from here to here. That looks good. And our Vout escape will escape our route. Our Vout will go R on the keyboard will is the keyboard shortcut, but you can also always just hit route. Go from here to here. All right. Escape and from here to here. Perfect. Right, and Vout also gets connected up to here. Now let's say I do something weird and I route it around this and I realize that that's not a very good way to route it and I want to get rid of it. There's a couple ways I can do that. I can hit unroute the net. That'll unroute everything that's connected to this net. I don't necessarily want to do that because these connections are all fine. It's just this one that's goofy. I can also unroute a connection. If I click on it, it'll unroute that. Or I can actually just select it so let's say I had the bad bad connection again. I can select it and hit backspace. And if I do it a second time, it will start backspacing all the way back to the source. I can also hit delete, but that'll only delete one of them. So I think a better way of routing it would probably be, uh, I don't know, something, some, maybe something like this. I, I'm not really sure yet. Let's just say that looks like a good one. And ooh, we're going to have a tough time getting to our output here. Hmm, maybe we can go around this way. There's a lot of important ways that you're supposed to, to route. And you can see this one's a lot skinnier because it doesn't have, I mean, it's one of those general pins. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, 45 mils like the other ones do. All right, so that's connected. Um, and this doesn't have the right designator name. Let's see if I can fix that. So, could just be that it got all goofed up. Let's try doing that. All right, no 
let's try saving that and importing changes. Hopefully that'll change the name. No differences found. Hmm. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Oh, maybe. No, that might have done it. Okay, it might have just not been connected on this end. So let's save it and import changes. There we go. So now it's adding that extra net that we uh, that connection that we made. And you can see here it changed it. So now we have our, our output. And now that I see this, maybe it would be more appropriate to move it over here. Let's get rid of some of these. Maybe just redo this connection and place him right about here. And we will route him just like just like we did before. Route him here and route him here. All right, looks good. You can also kind of move these traces too. You can like pull them, you know, if you want to make them a little bit nicer looking. Uh, I do that a lot of times after I've connected them. All right, and now I can even see that this board doesn't even have to be that big. I can probably move this guy a little bit closer. It's going to tell me I got to reroute this. That's fine. Let's just delete that. I can probably move him a little bit closer, and I can probably move this guy a little bit closer. Make this PCB as small as possible. It's always desirable. Just like this. Perfect. Okay, so I was deleting that. Let's reroute that to here. All right, looks good. So now this is a lot smaller. We can actually go back and modify this. Let's reroute our Vout connections here. One goes here, one goes here. Sorry, this video is getting so long. There's just so much to to this part of designing a PCB that it's kind of hard to make it make it a shorter video, unfortunately. And that looks that looks nice and pretty. I like that. Nice, nice, good-looking connections. Perfect. Okay. So now let's re-edit the board shape so we, so we can make it even smaller, which is good. Make it smaller here, make it smaller here, make it smaller on this end. Now we're going to have a nice small, um, nice small PCB, which is good. And uh, the last thing I was going to show you was, uh, you know, there's a, a particularly useful way to connect all these ground pins, and it's called uh, using a polygon. So if you click on the polygon up here, I want to connect the ground nets to each other. I'm going to do it on the top layer since that's the layer we're routing. Let's call this ground. Okay. And now I'm going to define the whole shape of the board. Let's say from here, each corner, one, two, three, and four. And now if I hit escape, see how it kind of fills the whole board in that isn't a trace. Uh, with, well, what, what is essentially a ground connection. So if I look at this ground pin, uh, you can see it, it reaches out to the rest of the board. And now everything, everything that is just attached to whatever is in a net is now attached to ground. And so it easily attaches your ground pins, which is super useful because that's, you know, all those have to be connected to each other anyway. Um, the last thing we need to do is check our work. And we can do that. And uh, when I say check our work, we just want to make sure that there are no floating nodes um, and that everything here looks good. So let's save, Control S. Let's go to View. And I like to go View Single Layer Mode. And let's look at the outline. So the outline isn't any of the nets. And we don't see any of those yellow connections that uh, show, hey, this has to be connected here. So let's, let's pretend I uh, forgot to connect this. Let's say I just delete that trace. And see I have that yellow connection there. 
Well, if I go to single la single uh, view mode and go to outline, it's very obvious that that connection was missed just by looking at it. So that's why I like to do that, but you don't necessarily have to. So I see that I did something wrong. I will reroute it. Let's say I go like this instead. Escape. It's going to tell me, hey, you're going to have to report this ground thing, uh, this ground plane. That's fine. So report. It'll kind of readjust it. And uh, let's say I want to go kind of back to what I had it there, but there it'll do it again for me. So this PCB is done. Um, if I kind of want to see what it's going to look like, I can also go in the view tab 3D mode. That's a lot of fun. Uh, and so this is uh, the 3D view of what this buck converter is going to look like, give or take. I can flip the board and see what the back looks like. There's not really anything exciting on the back. Um, but this will give me a decent little, you know, display of what, what it ended up looking like, and uh, that's always kind of fun. Um, I'm going to go back to 2D mode, though, first. Get rid of single layer mode. Um, and we'll do a rules and violations check. So I've already visually checked to make sure everything's connected, but there's some other rules I want to check. So if I go to home and design rule check and say run design rule check it could give me a couple errors here but it looks like I got so this kind of is the summary here I got no zero counts on errors zero counts on warnings looks like all the rules um, are, are good I have some violations but it looks like that's probably in my um, in my schematic, although yeah, those all look good too. Yeah, so this looks good. There, you know, it's probably something like I shouldn't have this on the outside and things like that. I can move these around a little bit, but other than that, the connections look good. Um, this will be the end of the probably the longest video in the series. Um, but now you have your your PCB and it's good to go. In the next video, I will show you how to uh, generate a uh, a format so you can export this and, and actually make your PCB fabricated at a place like Osh Park or whatever. So let's uh, file save all of our documents again and commit. So we actually send those back up to the cloud. Now we're going to be committing both the schematic and the PCB. So say OK. It's going to commit all the files and all the green check marks means it is saved. So hope that was helpful. Um, I'll see you in the next video.